Hey, good day to you. Welcome. And in this video, we're going to talk about three common bookkeeping mistakes of e-commerce sellers. We're going to tell you what the mistakes are and how to hopefully you'll be able to avoid them. Today with me, Daniel, he's the owner of Link My Books, which is an accounting automation software for online sellers, Amazon, which myself, I'm an Amazon seller and generally online sellers of different marketplaces. And we're going to have a link to Link My Books if you want to check out more about Daniel's uh, software. If we have any special offers, we're going to include them in the description as well. Daniel, can you please introduce yourself, man? And we're going to start with the sharing the mistakes and what to do with them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show today, Over. Yeah. yeah. So I'm Daniel. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Link My Books. Um, and as Wilbur well said, it's an accounting automation software. We exist to effectively help sellers who are selling on Amazon, eBay, Shopify, Etsy, Walmart, and soon to be TikTok shop as well to effectively take away the headache of their bookkeeping. So we automate the whole lot, basically. Nice. So people just come to you when they want to outsource their books, the accounting, right? And they come to you and you offer a solution that is automatic for them. So they, I guess, submit some information. They kind of get information back. If, yeah. You know, yeah so we're not it. really, we're not really a service provider and um, more than we are a software provider. So um, customers would subscribe to us on a monthly basis. They get access to the software and that effectively hooks up to their bookkeeping channels, to their sales channels, sorry, and their bookkeeping platform like Zero or QuickBooks, for example, and then we effectively pull all the information across, um, which I can show you in a, in a lot more accuracy in a second. Okay, man. Cool. So, yeah, let's talk about the mistakes people do with the uh, e-commerce bookkeeping. Yeah, man. Hopefully, we'll be able to help sellers in this video. Cool. So, yeah. So, today, I'm going to take you through sort of the three top mistakes that we see sellers making that cost them big time, effectively. Just for clarity... Up to date, since we started in 2018, we have worked with around 8,000 online sellers across Amazon, eBay, Shopify, Etsy, et cetera. And so we've gained quite a good data set to be able to look at what are the common mistakes that people make that are costing them a lot of money in their accounting. Um, and it's it's a lot of mistakes that people just don't even realize they're doing, to be honest. So we're going to cover today who I am, why you should listen to me, because obviously I'm probably brand new to most of your audience and why should they bother listening to me? Uh, why accurate accounting is so important, the three mistakes themselves and the software to use to get accurate accounting on autopilot. And obviously that is Link My Books. So mm -hmm. no shameful plug here, but it is going to be about my software at the end. So, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end if you've got any questions. So why should you listen to me? Well, so in 2014, I started my first Amazon business um, and I, I have actually run two Amazon businesses to date. So in 2014, I, I started the first one, I scaled that up to six figures and then sold that. And then the second one, I built up from 2016 to 2018 and I sold that up, scaled that up to seven figures and sold that. So I'm not just creating software mm. without having any experience. I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and have sort of been in the trenches. And what I learned from that was the two times that I sold that accurate accountant is vital when you come to selling because any good buyer is going to want to know exactly how your finances look before they're going to give you any money for your business. And the other thing that I learned is that revenue is vanity and profit is sanity. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of sellers out there who talk about they've done a million dollars in sales, they've done $10,000 today in sales, but there's not many who talk about how much profit they actually make. And obviously it's a little bit of secrecy. People don't really want to talk about that type of thing. But when you're looking at your own figures, you should always be considering what profit you're making, not just what revenue you're making, because otherwise you can make very poor decisions in your business. And then the third thing is that buyers, when you come to sell your business, if you've got that in mind, need confidence that your accounts and your taxes are correct because they are going to effectively sometimes take over legal ownership of your legal entity and therefore they need to know that all the taxes are in check as well. And so in 2018, I teamed up with another seller um, called Pete who, believe it or not, was actually my competitor on Amazon, but we became quite good friends. And we actually started Link My Books together. <laughs> so that's a bit of a funny story. And we also teamed up with some e-commerce specialist accountants in order to like work out exactly how to do all this. So obviously, we'd had the headache ourselves. We'd been through countless accountants and were just not really happy with the software that was out there. We saw a bit of a niche in the market and we went in full speed. So we created a software that automates e-commerce bookkeeping effectively. And as I said, we've got about 8,000 customers now across the UK, USA, and Australia. So why is accurate accountant so important? I always think of it as inaccurate accountant is like running your business in the dark. So you wouldn't want to make business decisions without having a good amount of information to hand and being able to make them with an educated sort of data set. So accurate accountant 
Oh, sorry. Uh, so if you don't have accurate accounting, it can lead to focusing on the wrong marketplaces, for example. So you could be thinking that you are making loads of money in your new venture into Europe, where you're selling in the UK, Germany, and France, for example. What you might be like missing the point is that your US sales, you may be doing 90% of your profit over there. And now you're focusing all of your time and attention on your European sales. And whilst if you think you, there's lots of room for expansion there, then that might be a good idea. But if you've been plugging away at it for a year and you're spending all of your time focused on those marketplaces and it's only making you 10% of your profit, then maybe you should start to think about where your priorities lie and you should start to look at that. But without knowing where you're making your profit, if you just treat your sales as sales in general and you don't split them out, then you'll not know that. And you might just think, actually, we've grown this year because we've been focusing on Europe. So it's it's really easy to like make the wrong decision without having the right data at hand. And then there's poor cash flow. So like not, not having enough money to pay for your next set of products because you've been pumping loads of like PPC into the poor performing products, stuff like that. That'll also restrict your growth. And then the number one thing, it, which we'll, we'll talk about throughout this presentation, the biggest thing is overpaying and underpaying taxes. So unless you're getting your accounts right, there's a risk that you'll end up accounting for the wrong amount of turnover or the wrong amount of VAT and just you'll pay too much or too little tax, neither of which you really want to do. Um, whereas with accurate accounting, you can make better, well-informed decisions and pay the right amount of tax as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, makes sense so far. Man. Yeah, yeah. So here's the three mistakes. So mistake number one, using the wrong reports. So an Amazon seller, for example, most online sellers will have some presence on Amazon is what we found. So if we take Amazon as an example, a lot of sellers are probably used to seeing something like this, the data range summary report, where they basically go into their account once a month and they go into reports, payments, and then the date range summary report, and they download the report for that entire month. And on the left-hand side is all your income, and on the right-hand side is all your expenses. Obviously, this is just a fictitious one, but yeah. they would be filled with loads more information below as well. They then think that that is enough, and they basically either pass that to their accountant or their bookkeeper, or maybe they just put those figures into their bookkeeping system themselves. And they just think, right, okay, that's me done for the month. But the problem with this is very many problems, but the two main problems are that this report just doesn't contain the level of detail that you need in order to get accurate bookkeeping. And the reasons for that are it doesn't contain where the destination country of those sales has gone to. So if you're selling on Amazon Europe, for example, somewhere in the UK and Europe, and you take that report for your UK marketplace and you download it and you just think, right, okay, all that income is from the UK. You're wrong that you will you will have sales that have gone outside the UK. And if you're a UK seller or you're registered for VAT, then you need to be separating those things out because otherwise you'll treat them all as UK valuable and you'll end up paying 20% on everything. Whereas if you separated out your sales that are going outside the UK, then you would end up paying less tax, less VAT. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in Australia. So Australia, you've got sales inside Australia, sales outside Australia. And it's the same in the US as well, because some sales would be treated differently for sales tax if you have sales tax permits, depending on where they're going to. So the destination country is a must. The tax that's been applied to each sale, that isn't on there either. And who's responsible for that tax isn't on there either. So again, these are all examples of where the marketplace is collecting the VAT or the tax or the GST. And this happens like pretty much every seller will be getting some form of this problem if they're using this report. And then the second reason, so that's sort of the first reason. The second reason is that when you're using a monthly report and then Amazon or the other sales channels are paying out once every two weeks, once a week, once a day, it's really difficult for you to then line those up to the actual figures that you've put in. And so what we see is that people who've come to us, they will have been doing this previously where they've taken that data range summary report, they put the income and the expenses into their zero or QuickBooks account, and then they bring in all of the payments that have come in from Amazon and they put them into a clearing account and they have like a virtual Amazon bank account where the sales go in and then the payments come in. And then they're always left with this little balance at the end of the month. And sure enough, that should match up to what is in their Amazon account as the reserve balance. But most people don't do that check. And even when they do, they don't really know what they're looking for. And it's really hard to like get the exact balance at the exact end point of the month 
when the payments are coming in sporadically during the month. So what it means is that people are just never really confident on that running balance. And they're just their accountant might ask a question like, oh, that balance that's showing in your clearing account, do you know that? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's just the money that's due from Amazon. So it goes on throughout the whole year. And then at the end of the year, then the accountant has to make some sort of adjustment because that balance was not actually correct. And so it's just you're just asking for trouble, basically, by doing it this way. Mm. And so what all this can result in is inaccurate accounting, which means that you pay too much or too little tax. And they are bad things because if you pay too much tax, it's money you should have kept. And if you pay too little tax and then the government finds out, then they'll charge you a penalty and they'll charge you the tax that you should have paid. So neither of those are a good thing. Now, the second thing is human error. So this is like the second biggest problem that we see is that even if people are using the right reports, so they're getting the right information from the sales channels, they're downloading all of that themselves, they're spending hours and hours putting it into a spreadsheet, and they're using clever formulas to work everything out. There's, there's a massive risk of human error. You drag the formula down wrong. You copy and paste the wrong information. You miss one of the reports that you should have done, and you miss cross-checking the tax information as to whether Amazon has collected the VAT or the tax, or you need to do that. And just those few little mistakes can result in, again, inaccurate accounts, leading to you paying too much tax or too little tax. So again, that's a, it's a huge problem that we see. And then the third one is literally just wasting so much time doing it manually. Like, even if you're getting all this information correct, and even if you're not making any mistakes, I can guarantee you're probably spending a good six hours per month just getting the information, downloading it, putting it into a spreadsheet, working all the figures, making sure you've done everything correctly, cross-checking all the balances, and then copying and pasting the figures in your bookkeeping system, and then reconciling off all the payments. When it's 2023, like software exists now to do pretty much everything. So why on earth are you spending six hours per month wasting your precious time doing that when you can instead just hook up Link My Books? Obviously, this is the plug here. So hook up Link My Books. And we'll do it all for you. It's just, it's automated software. So we'll collect all the information and we will put it all in the right places in your bookkeeping system so you don't have to touch it at all. And then you can just focus on growing your business. By using software, you can actually gain even more accuracy because we can do a lot of things algorithmically that would take you hours and hours to do manually through a spreadsheet and it would save you a lot of time. So that sort of brings me to the software solution. And obviously that's like my books. So what Link My Books does is it sits in between your sales channels like Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, and eBay. And we've also added Walmart and we're very close to adding TikTok Shop for UK users as well. And then on the other side, you've got Intuit, QuickBooks, and Zero. So effectively how this works is every time you receive a payout from a sales channel, i.e. Amazon, eBay, Shopify, whoever it is, we gather that information as to what the payout was made up of. So all the different sales, all the refunds, all the transactions that made up that payout. And we create a summary entry, which can then be posted across to your bookkeeping system. And so there's two ways to post them. You can either in that action menu on the top right-hand side, you can send them one by one. So if you just start your account, that's how the default behavior is. You come in, you'll see all your settlements imported for the last 90 days. We import the last 90 days worth during the free trial. And then you can choose which ones you want to send across to your bookkeeping system. But what most people will do once they're set up and they're happy with this is they'll just turn on auto posting, which means that you get a payment from Amazon or from whoever, and we process it and we post it across to your bookkeeping system. Now, inside those individual entries, so if we take that top one there, for example, £10,000 received from Amazon UK, uh, we go into that one and that one shows all the different sales. So sales inside the UK and sales outside the UK. So we've got sales by destination, refunds by destination. We've got the fees broken down by type and all the taxes have been automatically assigned. So what you end up with is a really clean entry in your bookkeeping system, which is breaking down what each of your payouts is. And the reason that that is good and really helpful to you is because it means that when you get to zero, or QuickBooks, your action looks like this. So you see the payments coming in on the left-hand side, and then you see a corresponding invoice that matches automatically with the payment coming in from the bank. And all you literally do is click OK in the middle, and that's it. So instead of spending six hours a month, you're now doing 25 clicks. How long does that take you? 25 seconds. <laughs> so you've saved five hours, 59 minutes, and 35 seconds. Now, if we go back a slide and we look at 
this again. So the reason, so it's obviously really nice that it reconciles off nice and easily and you don't have to worry about control accounts or balances sitting everywhere in your accounts anymore. You'll have a payment in from the bank. You'll have a corresponding invoice from Link My Books every time. But the, the real important bit is the taxes. So this is an example of a UK one. So from a UK business point of view, sales are treated differently, whether they go inside the UK or outside the UK. And there's different tax rates on fees as well. And we separate all that out automatically. So you end up with a nice clean entry, but it's accurate. And you pay the exact right amount of tax every single time. And for Australian sellers, it's the same. You've got sales inside Australia, sales outside Australia, and the different fees have different taxes. And then for US sellers, you've got sales taxes separated out. And any sales tax that has been collected by the marketplace, that's also separated out. So everything is being handled inside these summary entries, and it is then posted across to your bookkeeping system. So as I said, your only job is to go through and click to say, Yes, these are the payments that I've received, and these are the invoices that have been matched up. And so that's basically what Link My Books does in a nutshell, is we take away the pain of spending hours and hours doing your bookkeeping, and we make it as simple as a few clicks, and that's it. <laughs> so, man, we're going to have the trial, as we see here on the screen, free trial of Link My Books in the description of the video. Or if it's going to be on my blog, then it's going to be somewhere around the blog. And uh, also there's an option to book a demo call, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we offer a 14-day free trial. And you can do that at linkmybooks.com forward slash above. Or you can book a one-to-one -one demo call. So we actually have in-house five uh, qualified accountants who work in our support team who really know what they're talking about in terms of e-commerce accounting and also really understand Link My Books. Some of them have been with us for like three years now. And so you can actually book a call directly with them and you can have a one-for-one -one Google Meet. You can connect your accounts up. You can set them up with them on the call so that you know that everything is absolutely perfect and you can migrate across from however you were doing this before. So yeah, I understand, man. So kind of answered my question where I wanted to ask you like, about the process of like onboarding with Link My Books. So for example, a new seller is now interested and he's like, okay, I, I want to try. So let's say they take the free trial. What should they bring with them? Kind of what can we do to make this simple for you and for us? I think if, if they went in and just started a free trial, then basically the steps are they'll prompt, the system will prompt them to connect up their sales channels, connect their bookkeeping system. And then we take them through a guided setup wizard. So we basically take them through and say, like, we already know a lot about their inf a lot about their business because we detect that from their zero or QuickBook account. So we'll take them down a specific route. So US sellers go down one route, UK sellers go down a different route, Australian sellers go down a different route, and we'll basically suggest a setup. So we say these are the accounts we suggest you use. These are the tax rates we suggest you use. If they accept those, that's it. Their account is set up. It's really not too complicated. The people who book the demo calls tend to be people who have a more complicated setup or they're moving from a different solution or their accountant wants to know more information first. But and we are open to doing that. But probably 80% of our customers just come in and take a trial, set it up themselves, and then they just subscribe and they're happy with it. Nice, man. And is it because you mentioned United States, United Kingdom, and Australia? What about mm -hmm. other countries? Uh, let's say people from Pakistan, from Norway, I don't know, like anywhere. We, we do work with every country. It's just that our main three markets are US, UK, Australia. And we support anyone who has a zero or QuickBooks account. Effectively, it doesn't matter what region that's in. We work with any zero QuickBooks account and we work with any region of Amazon as well. So all Amazon marketplaces are supported. You can connect up all your different sales channels. So there's no restrictions. The only difference is that during the setup wizard, we give sort of suggested tax rates for UK, Australia, and USA. But for anyone else, they fall down what we call the rest of world path. And then they have to choose their own tax rates. Because obviously for us to suggest them, we have had to do a lot of research. And for us to do research into every single country in the world would be very, very time consuming. So as long as they are happy setting up their own tax rates, otherwise they can get in touch with us and we can work with them to try and work out what the best way to do it is. But that's the only difference. It works for every country.
Nice, man. So I'll remind the, our listeners, viewers, we have the link for a free trial in the description. It's an affiliate link. It means that if you ever do business with like my books and Daniel, I'm going to get a little commission from that. No extra cost to you, but this way it's possible to support this free project that, I'm, that I've am been creating for like four years already. Daniel, I wanted to ask you, man, let's touch on the pricing of like my books. So maybe there's a bigger seller watching, maybe a beginner seller who's just trying to make it right. Can we look at the pricing and just understand how it works and maybe the viewers will understand what's the best? one for them yeah absolutely let me just pull up uh, link my books.com slash pricing and um, so it's going to show me in pounds because i'm located in the uk but i can uh, well we do have pricing in dollars and also in australian dollars as well so it's just whatever the exchange rate is it's roughly roughly that sort of thing so you can just take that with a pinch of salt but for uk sellers it's 13 starts at 13 pounds a month that includes up to 200 orders and one sales channel. So if you're selling as a pretty new seller, you're doing less than 200 orders a month and you're only selling on Amazon, for example, then that would be 13 pounds a month. If you were selling on Amazon and you were also sold on Shopify, then that would be two channels. Then you would need to move across to the pro version, which includes up to five channels and still the 200 orders. And then the other way is just depends on how many orders you have. Okay. So okay. if you go over 200 orders up to a thousand, that would be 26 pound. Up to 5,000 orders would be 39, 10,065, 89, 115, until eventually, this is normally what we're accountant packages stand on the enterprise level. So 249 pounds, that includes a quarter of a million orders to share between all their clients that they have. They get the first 10 sales channels included, and then every sales channel after that is a flat rate, 11 pounds. That's what mainly accountants are using. But our most popular plan is this one here which is between 1,000 and 5,000 orders. And they've got normally between three and five sales channels. So they're selling on Amazon and on eBay and on Etsy, et cetera. And that's £49 a month. What's the historical date? I mean, we have three months, 12 months, 24 months. What, what does it mean? So what that means is effectively, as part of the free trial, we'll download the last three months of historical data. So we'll, we'll bring in all of your payouts from the last three months for those channels. And then you can choose which ones you want to send across to your bookkeeping system. But if you want to go back further, so say you haven't done any bookkeeping or you've realized when you post them three months across that, actually, I've been doing this wrong. I want to replace everything that I've got, which is pretty common. We get a lot of people who want to do that because obviously if you get it right, you'll pay the correct amount of tax, which is often less than what you've accounted for previously doing it yourself. So we can actually go back up to two years. So the pro plans come with 12 months. The premium plans come with 24 months historical data allowance. So you can go back up to two years. Even if you're on the light plans, for example, and you've only got three months included, we actually do sell like one-off packages as well. So for £49 one-off, you can get 12 months history. And for £99 one-off, you can get 24 months history, but stay on the light plan. So you don't have to pay the extra cost every single month if you've only got one sales channel. So you can get in touch with the support team and they can arrange those extra historical allowances as well. Nice, man. And also, I see we can pay monthly or yearly. So monthly is going to be per, for month or yearly is one payment and saves us two months, I understand, right? Yeah, exactly. So monthly for this example is £39 and yearly is 390 So we end up saving two payments. So it's about whatever that is, 20, 22% or 19%. I can't remember exactly what it is. But yeah, you save two months basically. So again, a reminder to our viewers, listeners, the link to link my books is in the description. Get a free trial, try it out. Read the pricing page, see where you're standing right now. What's your amount of orders? What's the right plan for you? And do the free trial. What's like included in the free trial? So is there onboarding with a free trial? Can we get help even with a free trial with onboarding, man? Yeah, absolutely. So nice. when you come nice. into um, the site and you start a free trial, so let's just say, for example, we were coming across to link my books. It would look a bit like this. You would say, get started for free. You pop in your email address, you sign in with your zero or QuickBooks account, just so you don't have to have any usernames and passwords. And then you will be able to connect up your sales channel, connect up your bookkeeping account. And at that point, you can reach out to the support team. At the bottom right-hand side of every page is this little drop-down. So you can actually search our help documents. You can send a message to the team. And you can also book a one-to-one -one meeting through the support team as well. 
Nice, man. So again, all the links are in the description. And Daniel, maybe something I should have asked you and I haven't asked about link my books or like, seems like we went through it all. We went through, of course, we talked about the mistakes as well. And, but, but also we went through how the software works, how the process works. We talked about pricing. We shared a free trial for the people watching. There's a demo call as well. Anything we have missed? One thing that I always like to talk about is how much our customers love us. So I think it's one thing me saying that our software is great. And it's one thing you recommending it. But if you go into the like zero app store, for example, so if I just pull up zero or link my books, let's see if we can find the app store here. So we actually have 403 reviews on the zero app store, all five star, every single one of them, which is pretty uncommon if you ask me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I think that if you read through some of the reviews, the overarching themes are that the software is great, but the support is on another level. He has someone actually calling out that one of the girls on the team is our hero, like excellent support, fantastic support, amazing help. The thing is with, with financial information and with doing your bookkeeping, it's good to be able to have someone who's just at the end of a message or at the end of a live chat, or you can pick up the phone too, who you can just ask those questions that if you went up to your accountant and asked them, it would take them a few days to get back to you. So I think that it's it's just... It's good. And even for the accountants as well who are using us, because we have lots of accountants who use our software to take away the, the data entry side for their clients. So obviously this is getting rid of all that so they can focus on providing value-added services to their clients. So the customers can come to us both as e-commerce sellers and as accountants and can ask questions about something that's industry-specific. So we know a lot of information about how accounting specifically works for e-commerce so it's nice to have that level of support and be able to know that you've got the peace of mind that everything is set up correctly and that you've got someone at the end of the phone to be able to speak to. Yeah, man. Really great reviews. That's a great amount of reviews for like without like having uh, three, two, one stars, which is, you know, it's really awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is just the zero app store. Like we have yeah. reviews on Cafeteria. We've got reviews on Facebook, on Google, on the QuickBooks app store, like Shopify app store. Like we've got them all over the place. But I think... Zero especially is where we have quite a lot because we started off with a zero connection before we had. Interesting. Well, awesome, man. Yeah, again, all the links are in the description for our viewers. Hopefully this was helpful. Viewers, listeners, drop comments. If you want to know something that we did not cover, I'll answer it myself or I'll ask Daniel and we're going to get back to you for sure. Free trial in the description. Daniel, man, thank you. And I'll be glad to have you for more videos where maybe we could dive deep and see how it looks from the inside. That might be also yeah. useful for our viewers who have come to this point and they will be able to see once and if we create this video I'll link it in the description where people could go and see how it looks from the inside so they can kind of visualize it further and then see if it's for them or not and all that yeah absolutely and we actually have a, a demo that i made myself going through how the system works so you can maybe link that video down there as well okay, so that the we'll customer can see that um, and then sure. we've updated the system quite a lot since then so it might look a little bit different so yeah i'll be keen to get back on your show and take everyone through how it looks now. Great, man. Well, thank you for today, man. Thank you for your time. Thank you for educating us and uh, keep up uh, with the five-star reviews, man. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time, man. And nice to meet everyone. Yes, thank you.